Hi folks, my name is Dr. Ty Robbins and I wanted to provide you with a quick overview of our course, EVSP 503. Now, while I may not be your instructor this semester, I've taught this course many times and as an environmental economist, I can attest to the relevancy and importance of policies and regulations to modify consumer, firm, and national behavior in creating a more sustainable world. In this video, I hope to share the big picture of the course and get you excited for the weeks ahead. Overall, at the foundational level, environmental regulation and laws are created to solve an inherent problem, and that's the problem of inefficiency. Environmental goods are often rivalrous in nature, inducing consumers and firms to exploit resources before the competitors can. In addition, citizen consumption and firm production often create negative externalities that increase societal costs and or harm innocent third parties. Importantly, these issues impact both current and future generations. We'll explore complex topics in 503. This course helps you understand how laws are created and utilized to minimize, prevent, punish, or remedy the consequences of actions that threaten the environment and public safety. The overreaching goal is to regulate the actions of people and firms as they're connected to the environment. In particular, we'll review historical events that spurred environmental movements and new regulations. In addition, we'll compare how US regulations compare with other developed and developing nations of the world. We'll also examine how these laws influence both consumer and firm behavior, and we'll cover many applications that include air, water, and other natural resources. Now on the left side of the slide, you'll see an array of learning outcomes, which you'll focus on in this course. Now, while I won't read each in detail, it's helpful to point out and identify the main takeaways and connections. Overall, you'll notice an emphasis on understanding the underlying issues that generate environmental problems. It's critical to identify the root causes of any issues before we attempt to regulate them. Next, we'll introduce both historical regulations that have been created and future potential for improvement. In doing so, we evaluate the efficacy of regulations on consumer and firm behavior. When regulators identify suboptimal results, there is an opportunity to modify this legislation to be more effective. Again, we'll tackle these questions over many aspects of the national environment. In its application to the field and future job opportunities, this class helps us identify the strengths and weaknesses of environmental regulation and their applications, and how to use these policies to advise both private and the public sector. Having a strong understanding of environmental law allows us to navigate the opportunities for growth and the responsibilities for conservation across all industries. There are no formal prerequisites for this course aside from the willingness to learn and the patience, mind you, and growing excitement to read and understand the applications of environmental laws across all sectors. In sum, I hope this overview gave you a little flavor of what you'll cover in this course. While 503 may at times be complex and legally challenging, it's the very foundation for future progress and societal change. Take care and welcome to the class.